Today I am going to start the second lecture of the microeconomics. I hope you understood the pre previous lectures of the consumer theory. In the previous lecture we have discussed about the concept of the cardinal approach and ordinal approach and we have discussed about um, the budget line theory and I have given you the glimpse of indifference curve theory also and uh, now we have discussed about the maximum satisfaction gained by the consumer after consuming the goods and services the idea behind the budget line was about also the uh, maximization of the satisfaction by using the different goods within the limited income so it was about the budget constraint today I am going to start the topic of indifference curve but before that in the previous lecture I have discussed how to find out the slope and intercept of the budget line because those were important about the shifting of the budget line whenever we have discussed about the budget line that was dependent on the prices and income it means we consider how the consumers responds to change in his market environment so it means the budget line can shift because of income and the prices first of all if we see the budget line can change with income so an increase in endowment income causes a parallel shift out of the budget constraint and a decrease in endowment income causes a parallel shift in of the budget constraint in this diagram you can easily see the intercepts which are on the x axis showing m over px and here it is m dash over px m over py and m dash over py whenever you are talking about change in income it means you are considering the prices of x and y are constant if the salary of the person of uh, or any specific person has been increased or decreased but the prices of goods are remain same it means the prices are not changed but the income is affecting on the price of both goods x and y means for food and clothing so whenever the income of the person will increase he will purchase more of the food and more of the clothing more of x and more of y that's why this budget line will shift thoroughly from this to above budget line it means m dash is greater than m person salary was 10,000 and after that it has been increased to 20,000 but prices of the items food items or either the clothed items are remain same and the second comparative static analysis is about the changes in prices whenever for example the income of the person is same the salaries or the wages have not been changed of the people but the prices are going to change either it is the price of x or it is the price of y whenever we say the prices of x will change it means the prices of y and income will remain same and if we say the price of y will change it means the price of x and income will remain same in other words I can say that if the prices of clothes has been changed it doesn't mean that the prices of food items has also been changed it means the prices of food are same but prices of clothes have been changed okay but the income is same the person's salary is same but the price of clothes has been changed 
and the price of food is same. An increase in price causes a inward shifting of the budget constraint or budget line and decrease in price causes a uh, pivot outwards of the budget constraint or shifting outwards of the budget line. It means now we are um, talking about the case of falling of the price and if you are talking about the price of X commodities you can name this commodity food or some other good and here it is M over PY and you are considering this M which is showing the income this is same. Whenever the price of any commodity that will fall it means the purchasing power of the people will go to increase and he will purchase more of the good so that's why the budget line will shift outward. If it was the case of increase in price of X not in Y it means Y and M will remain same. So whenever the price of X will increase it means now you can purchase the fewer items or now you can purchase the fewer food. So this budget line will shift inward. It means your purchasing power has been reduced. So this was all about the theory of uh, budget line and uh, in the previous lecture I have discussed about the slope of the budget line okay, and the slope of this budget line that we have discussed and we have calculated. Today's topic is indifference curve and in case of indifference curve this is showing the locus of point in commodity space or commodity bundles among which the consumer is indifferent. And in other words, it's also showing that all the combinations of X and Y or you can say of goods which gives the same level of satisfaction or which gives the same level of utility. And the idea of marginal rate of substitution is also dependent on indifference curve. So the indifference curves actually defines the combinations of good X and Y that give the consumer the same level of satisfaction that the consumer is indifferent between good X and good Y. A typical indifference curve that uh, have been shown in uh, the previous lecture also and I will show in this lecture also that the indifference curve that was convex and the indifference curve why the indifference curve that is convex it is because of marginal rate of substitution so the marginal rate of substitution is the amount of Y the consumer is willing to sacrifice in order to get an additional unit of X so that the consumer maintains the same level of utility or as consumer moves down on indifference curve the marginal rate of substitution between X and Y diminishes and that can be written as marginal utility of Y divided by marginal utility of X. By definition, all combinations of X and Y located on the indifference curve provide the consumer with the same level of satisfaction. For example, if you ask the consumer which would you prefer, bundle A, bundle B or bundle C, the consumer would reply, I don't care. Because bundles A, B and C all lie on the same indifference curve. In other words, the consumer is indifferent between all the bundles. The shape of the indifference curve depends on the consumer's preferences. Different consumers generally will have different curves of different shapes. One important way to summarize information about the consumer's preferences is in terms of marginal rate of substitution. So the marginal rate of substitution is the absolute value of the 
slope of an indifference curve and the marginal rate of substitution between two goods is the rate at which a consumer is willing to substitute one good for the other and still maintain the same level of satisfaction. The reason is that the indifference curve satisfies the property of diminishing marginal rate of substitution. It means because of diminishing marginal rate of substitution, indifference curves are convex to origin and becoming flatter as we move to the right. The diminishing marginal rate of substitution means as a consumer obtains more of good X, the amount of good Y he or she is willing to give up to obtain another unit of good X decreases. Because of this assumption, the indifference curves are convex. You can go through this video and you can see that how the marginal rate of substitution has been calculated. This is very helpful for understanding the concept of indifference curve also. In this tutorial, I'm going to discuss indifference curves and give you an introduction. I'm going to discuss marginal rate of substitution. Along an indifference curve, the purple line, utility is constant along the curve. That means you're equally happy anywhere along this curve. But exchange is not constant. The way you substitute Y for X is not constant. You think of utility like happiness or satisfaction. Utility is a function of consuming some X or Y in this case. It could be a lot of things, but I'm going to keep it to two variables. So utility is a function of consuming a combination of X and Y, a function. That means there's some type of formula that defines utility. So imagine along the X axis, you have spending time with friends and Y is reading books and the utility, your utility curve looks something like this. Along this curve is constant. But the way you trade or exchange reading books for spending time with friends is not constant. So in the difference curves, let me put some numbers here at the bottom. Quantity of good X. And on the Y axis, we have quantity of good Y. Again, utility is defined as some function of X and Y, some type of combination of those two goods. The indifference curve is the purple line there. It's downward sloping. Point A is utility of point A is consuming 10 X and 60 Y. At point B, utility is 20x and 40y, but it's equal to utility at point A. Point C, utility is 40x and 20y, and it again is equal to the previous utilities of point A and B and C. Now I'm going to talk about marginal rate of substitution. That is moving from point A to point B. How much A am I willing to give up to get this much B? So there's change in Y divided by the change in X. And this is equal to 40 minus 60 divided by 20 minus 10. This is equal to negative 20 divided by 10 plus 10. The consumer is willing to give up 20y to get 10x. The marginal rate of substitution in this case is 2. If I continue on and I go from point B to let's say point C, B to C, 
Let me draw that in right there. Okay. The consumer's giving up Y to get some X. The formula becomes 20 minus 40 divided by 40 minus 20, which is equal to minus 20 divided by plus 20. So this turns out to be an even exchange and marginal rate of substitution is one in this case, an even exchange. Before I move on, let me examine that a little bit closer. So moving from point A to B, I give up that much Y to get that much X. But when I go from B to C, I give up the same. So point A to B is 2 to 1, and B to C is 1 to 1. Moving from A to B, I'm willing to give up 2Y to get 1X, but going from B to C, it's a 1 to 1 exchange. It's even exchange, 1X for 1Y. Now, if I continue on and I'll add point D, so I'm going to move from C to D and calculate the marginal rate of substitution. So I look at the change in Y divided by the change in X again. So that's 20 minus 10 and 40 minus 70. This is equal to 10 divided by 30. So the consumer is willing to go up 10 Y to get 30 X or a one to three ratio. Moving from point A to B, let me fade this out here real quick. So moving from point A to B, the consumer is willing to give up 2Y to get 1X. But moving from C to D, the consumer is willing to give up 1Y to get 3X. So as the consumer moves down the indifference curve, Y is getting scarce. So if the consumer has a lot of something, they're willing to give it up easily. But if they have a limited supply, they, they're less willing to give it up. This has just been an introduction to marginal rate of substitution and indifference curves. More to come. So this video, you can easily see how could you calculate the marginal rate of substitution. Marginal rate of substitution concept is related with the indifference curve and you can easily see that opportunity cost was a constant it is falling down that's why the indifference curve is convex this was the reason there are some properties of the indifference curves and there are some logics behind them properties of the indifference curves are indifference curves are first of all negatively sloped as you have seen that and the higher indifference curves correspond to greater level of total utility. Indifference curves are bowed towards the region. Indifference curves do not cross. First of all, indifference curves are negatively sloped. And you can see from here that the indifference curves are negatively sloped. It is showing the property of diminishing marginal rate of substitution. This property is also related that indifference curves are bowed towards the region. It's the reason behind that is principle of diminishing marginal utility. As you get more and more of the good, the utility from each additional unit decreases. And the more is better. This is the another property of the indifference curve is. It means you always choose the more to get the higher level of satisfaction. The more of a good you get, the better off you are. Just to stay at the same level of utility, 
as you move from A to B, you must give up some pizza. Therefore, indifference curves slope downwards and higher indifference curves correspond to greater utility level because on the higher indifference curves you get more of at least one of the goods and no less of another. So whenever this indifference curve will shift upward you will get the more utility but on the same indifference curve you will get the same level of utility. And here is the next property of the indifference curve that indifference curves do not cross with each other. It means one bundle cannot give two different levels of satisfaction or happiness to the same person at the same point in time. Here you can see that this is the indifference curve which is showing the negatively sloped and all the points on the indifference curves gives the same level of satisfaction in each point. And you can easily see that the slope of the indifference curve this will be falling down here as the curve will become flatter. This is showing the higher indifference curve will give the higher satisfaction and lower indifference curve will give you the lower satisfaction because whenever you will talk about the I naught so it means all the points on this indifference curves gives the same level of utility. And whenever you talk about I1 and I2, it means this, the I1 give the higher level of utility than the I0 and I2 will give the higher level of utility than the I1. So higher indifference curves gives the higher level of satisfaction. But now the level of satisfaction cannot be measured but these level of satisfactions can be preferred or can be ordered. And we have discussed about the next property that the indifference curves cannot be crossed with each other. This property is relying on one principle of indifference curve of transitivity. You can see here there are two interference curves I0 and I1 and here are the they are showing three bundles A, B and C. A is lying on both interference curves I0 and I1 and here the A is equivalent to B, A is also equivalent to C. That's why the B will be equal to C but if A is equal to B and A is equal to C, it means the B must be equal to C according to transitivity definition. But here the B is more preferable over C because you can see that the B is on the indifference curve which is lying above the I0 but A is lying on both so indifference curves cannot cross with each other but indifference curves are like this this cannot cross with each other because if they will cross or touch with each other they will fail the property of transitivity here are some preferences or you can say these are extreme cases of indifference curves that if indifference curves are perfect substitutes and perfect complements. This is the case whenever the indifference curves are perfect substitutes you can see these are in case of linear lines, straight lines. In these straight lines the marginal rate of substitution this is constant. These are not convex, these are not, uh, the marginal rate of substitution is not falling here. That's why this is called the, the extreme case of the indifference curve. Whenever you talk about the perfect complements case, in this case, the marginal rate of substitution 
is zero. And the property of convexity or property of indifference curves say that the marginal rate of substitution, this is falling. And the indifference curves must be convex that depends on property of diminishing marginal rate of substitution. But here the marginal rate of substitution is zero and here the, all the indifference curves are L-shaped. So this is violating the property of indifference curve. You can see this video for the further uh, showing the types of indifference curves. You can see here there are three types of the indifference curves. Finally, we're going to look at two forms of indifference curves that kind of take the uh, assumptions we made about uh, the normal preferences, so this graph here, and it's kind of going to extend them to one extreme. So we've now got perfect substitutes and perfect complements. So if ever these come up on an exam, you'll know them when you see them. So with normal preferences, we had all those properties that we had just covered. So we've got convex indifference curves, We've got downward sloping uh, indifference curves as well. And notice how they never intersect. So we've seen this. So what about the perfect substitutes case? Well here, notice that they're always negatively sloped. But here, they don't have that uh, kind of bowed outward shape. Technically, they're still convex. So this is kind of one extreme form here, where we have uh, exactly one straight line. What that represents is the marginal rate of substitution is going to be equal everywhere along here on the curve. So what does that mean? Well, we're saying there's no diminishing marginal returns effect. So in this case, that's not going to apply. So what kinds of situations might we have at perfect substitutes? Well, in the first case, we had chips and coke. So you didn't want to have too many chips because then your mouth was going to be dry and you needed something to drink. What if we got a different combination of goods? What if, in the perfect substitute skates, we have Coke and Pepsi? Maybe you really would be happy only drinking only Coke, or only drinking Pepsi. In this case, having only one good or the other will in fact give you the same utility value. So in this case, utility value of 10, or if you had more income, utility value of 20. In the last case here, we're going to look at perfect complements. So this is another kind of exception to the normal preferences situation. So here, what's going on? Well, first I'm going to start you off with an example. So we've got one left shoe and one right shoe. Well, we need two shoes in order to be able to wear a pair. So if we had two left shoes, or even three left shoes, or ten, it's not going to leave us any better off. We need both a left and a right to get any value out of that pair. So what does that mean? Well, we're going to say here that no matter how many more of left shoes we have, we've only got one right one, we're only going to get a utility value of 10. And the same goes the other way. So what if we had only one left shoe and, and you know, an infinitely many number of right shoes? We're still only going to get one pair. So that's to say a utility value of 10. The only way the only way for us to get more value is to have more complete pairs. So in this case, maybe we have two left shoes and two right shoes. So notice here that that's illustrating the perfect complements point, where you need to have some of both in order to have any increase in value at all.
So this is about the types of indifferent skirts. It is um, perfect substitutes and perfect complements as you have seen that. So these are two extreme cases and in this case the marginal rate of substitution are not going to fall. Now there are some axioms of the consumer's preferences and these are called also the principles of the consumer's uh, preferences. First, the first principle of the consumer preferences is you, uh, you are saying about it is completeness. Completeness means you are talking about two bundles A and B and the consumer is preferring either A over B or B over A. It means the consumer or uh, the purchaser he is indifferent on both bundles like you are talking about the both bundles giving him the same level of satisfaction so the, this is the theory of completeness means A is like the B he is indifferent between both by assuming that the preferences are complete we assume that the consumer is capable of expressing a preference for or indifference among all the bundles. If preferences were not complete, there might be cases where a consumer would claim not to know whether he or she preferred bundle A to B or B to A or was indifferent between the two bundles. If the consumer cannot express her or his own preferences for or indifference among goods, the manager can hardly predict that individual's consumption patterns with reasonable accuracy. Second axiom is reflexivity. It means the both bundles, they are the reflection of one another. The consumer must be indifferent between bundle A and itself. It means the both bundles are giving him the same level of satisfaction and you can say that the A is A has the mirror impact on the other bundle. So both bundles they are showing the reflection of each other. Third is transitivity and that is very important axiom of the consumer preferences and as you can see that the, uh, the interference curve must follow all these axioms otherwise um, you can see the property of indifference curve the indifference curves cannot cross with each other depends on the property of the transitivity it means if a is preferred to B and B is preferred to C. So A must be preferred to C. You are talking about three consumption bundles. You are talking about tea, coffee and drink. And in case of transitivity, you are saying about if tea is preferred over coffee and coffee is preferred over drink. So the tea must be preferred over drink because here you are saying about the A is preferred over B. So A must be preferred over C. This transitivity condition can be written as A if A is indifferent to B and B is indifferent to C, so A must be indifferent to C. It means if A is equals to B, B is equals to C, then the A must be equal to C and this is um, fulfilling the property of the transitivity. And here the non satiation or more is better, it means the consumer always wants to maximize his utility. If bundle A has more at least one good than bundle B with at least the same or more amount of the other good then bundle B then A is preferred to B. This is easily can be explained through the different indifference curves analysis and as you can see the different indifference curves in the previous slides that if the one indifference curve is lying above the previous indifference curves, the above indifference curve will give the higher satisfaction or higher utility than the previous indifference curves. Now there is a question that how the marginal rate of substitution is related to the slope of the indifference curves. As you know that the slope of the indifference curve is negative and the indifference curves are convex. 
The reason behind the convexity is diminishing marginal rate of substitution between the x and y. It means whenever you are uh, consuming the one commodity, you are giving up the uh, giving up the another commodity also. If you are consuming food items more, it means you are forgiving or you are uh, forgoing the other clothing commodity also. The marginal rate of substitution is the rate at which the person give up the good on the vertical axis for one more unit of the good on the horizontal axis such that total utility remains unchanged. So that's why the marginal rate of substitution and slope of IC, these are related. As we have gone through the concepts of budget line and indifference curve analysis, so now um, of a topic of interest is consumer equilibrium. How the consumer will get the equilibrium? As you know, the consumer always wants to maximize the utility and the higher indifference curve always the consumer will get the higher level of the utility so that's why now we are concerning about the consumer equilibrium if there was no scarcity or the limited resources the more is better property would imply that the consumer would want to consume bundles that contain infinite amount of goods However, one implication of scarcity is that the consumer must select a bundle that lies inside the budget set that is affordable. And geometrically, the consumer equilibrium can be written like this. The marginal rate of substitution between X and Y can be written like price of X divided by price of Y. And this marginal rate of substitution this is equals to marginal utility of x divided or divisible by marginal utility of y and you can write this by mux over muy is equals to px over py and further this can be explained through this mux over px and muy over py. This diagram is depicting the consumer equilibrium as the Px over Py, this is showing the slope of the budget line, MRS, XY, this is the slope of the indifference curve, both are intersecting at point A, so here the utility is maximized. You can go through this video for showing the consumer equilibrium. Consumer equilibrium in terms of indifference curve analysis. The two tools that we are going to use in this connection are indifference map and budget line. Indifference map exhibits consumers scale of preference for various combinations of two goods say good x and good y consumer is indifferent among combinations within the indifference curve and not between combinations on two different indifference curves. As the consumer is assumed to behave rationally, he wants to reach the highest possible indifference curve. 
his aim is to maximize his utility but he is constrained by his income and the prices of goods x and y he can move inside the triangle aob he cannot move beyond the price line a sensible consumer will move along the price line that alone will exhaust his income after buying a combination well we shall now define consumer equilibrium consumer is in equilibrium when he maximizes his utility at that point consumer will not have a tendency to rearrange his purchases of two goods he will not have a tendency to reallocate his budget to analyze the equilibrium of the consumer we have to integrate indifference map with the price line we know the consumer is going to choose any one of the combinations on the price line as a first step he fixes all the points common to both indifference curves and price line they are d f c g and h consumer decides to move from point a he moves down and reaches point d he examines his position he finds he is on indifference curve 1 he believes he can go for a higher level of utility again he compares marginal rate of substitution of x for y with the price ratio the mrs of x for y is greater than the price ratio he substitutes good x for good y and moves down listen carefully substitutes x for y he reaches the point f he is on indifference curve 2 now again he compares marginal rate of substitution of x for y with price ratio the mrs of x for y is greater than price ratio he feels there is still scope for maximizing his utility he moves further down he reaches point c once again he compares mrs of x for y with price ratio both are equal point c is on indifference curve 3 this is the highest possible indifference curve that the consumer can reach hence c is the point of equilibrium anyway we have to examine points g and h now we shall make the consumer to move from point b he moves up to point h combination h is on indifference curve 1 moreover marginal rate of substitution of x for y is less than the price ratio consumer in order to reach a higher indifference curve reallocates his budget 
and substitutes good y for good x. Listen carefully. Now he substitutes y for x. He moves to point G. This combination is on indifference curve too. In this case also, marginal rate of substitution of x for y is less than the price ratio. He rearranges his budget and substitutes y for x. At last, he reaches point C. It is on the indifference curve 3. Here, MRS of x for y is equal to the price ratio. Even if the consumer wants to move to indifference curve 4, he cannot because it lies to the right of the price line. It is beyond the reach of the consumer. So, indifference curve 3 is the maximum possible indifference curve consumer can reach with his budget and prices of the two goods are given. Once again, we shall recollect the equilibrium conditions. At the point of equilibrium, marginal rate of substitution of x for y must be equal to the price ratio. Since MRS of x for y is the slope of the indifference curve and the price ratio is equal to the slope of the price line. The slope of the indifference curve must be equal to the slope of the price line. Again, as the slope of the indifference curve is equal to the rate at which the consumer would like to exchange good X for good Y, and slope of the price line is equal to the market rate of exchange, the rate at which the consumer would like to exchange good X for good Y must be equal to the market rate of exchange. The equilibrium condition can be technically stated like this. At the point of equilibrium, first order condition, indifference curve must be tangential to the price line. Second order condition, marginal rate of substitution of x for y must be diminishing or indifference curve must be convex towards the origin. There ends our discussion. Thanks for watching. Meet you all again. So you have gone through this video and here he has explained the consumer equilibrium that the slope of budget line must equal to the slope of indifference curve and there was the necessary and sufficient condition you can see there were some points were given and only there was one point here they were showing the consumer equilibrium so here the consumer equilibrium where MRS must equal to the ERS and MRS is amount of Y the consumer is willing to sacrifice for one extra unit of X and the uh, slope of budget line is ERS which is called economic rate of substitution and amount of Y the consumer is obliged to sacrifice for one extra unit of X so whenever these both are equal this is called the consumer equilibrium. Thanks for your attention.